<clears throat> Hello again and welcome. Boy, do I have a treat for you today. Call Manager 14 has been released. And today we're going to go through that installation. And although I have done many installations in the course of my career, I have never done this one. So we're going to be learning together on this one. So first of all, we need to know where to get that uh, that download. So if we go to our software download home and you're going to type in uh, how about call manager, not call law manager. Call manager, we come up with unified communications manager and there it is. Unified communications manager version 14. Okay. To get to the actual download of the ISO, we're going to go to Unified Communications Manager Updates, and there it is. All right, so you're going to want to get, for the U.S., you're going to want to get uh, the Export Restricted, which is going to be the one that has the full encryption capabilities. Uh, and there are a couple of related software here that you're going to need to know as far as upgrading is concerned. And of course, I'm gonna do another uh, video soon about upgrading from 12.5 to 14. Uh, and things that you will need there is possibly you will need to this file of to enable SHA-512 signing, uh, which some versions of call manager do not have natively you're going to need to take a look at the free common space uh, file possibly and you're going to need to take a look at the pre-upgrade check which will check your system and make sure that there's enough free space the network is all good ntp is good and uh, replication is looking good and all that good stuff but this time we're just doing an install uh, brand new install uh, and so for that, what we're going to need is the OBA, which is in the virtual machine templates right there. Okay. So I have both of those, both the ISO and the OBA uh, downloaded already. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you know that uh, I have explained the ISOs that you can get from Cisco here are not bootable. And so they need to be uh, updated so that they can uh, be able to boot the image. Uh, and so I do have another video that shows ex exactly how to do that. And I will be linking that in the video so that you can take a look at that. Um, it doesn't matter the version, it, it, it's all the same. The, that, that video, was probably for 10.5, but it still works for 14. Um, and so that's what you need to do for that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, start with the OVA. So we want to deploy virtual machine from OVA file. And we want to find our OVA, which is right here. And download that in there. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, we have to hit next first. Now we can drag it over there. Okay, and now we need to give it a name. I'm gonna give it CUCM pub 14. Now, interesting little tidbit is that uh, Cisco is no longer going to go with the half versions as in 11.5 or 12.5. Uh, from version 14 on, they are going to stick with the full version. Um, I assume that they will have service updates from that, but uh, they will no longer, they will no be, not be a 14.5 um, before they have a 15. So we'll move on from there. And here we have three different options, sizing options small medium and large and if we take a look at that the small we're looking at two virtual cpus we're looking at six gigs of ram and we're looking at 180 gig hard drive 
okay? And for a medium, we are looking at two virtual CPUs. We're looking at eight gigs of RAM and one 110 gig hard drive. And for the large, we're gonna look at four virtual CPUs, gives it a little more computing power, power there. Eight gigs of RAM, same as the medium. One 110 gig hard drive, same as the medium. All right, we're gonna uncheck the power on automatically because we need to uh, mount the image on there before it powers up or else it will not be able to power up. Okay, and there's our summary and we hit finish. Okay, now with that, we need to make sure that we have our ISO uploaded to the data store so that we can be able to install it. And there is the image that I downloaded and made bootable and I renamed it with that bootable in front so that it would be able to boot, okay? And now we need to go to our virtual machine that we just created. We need to mount that image, okay? So we're gonna open that up. We're gonna change that to data store ISO file. Go to the ISO directory where I have that. And up at the top, move that over so I can see. And there is the 14 image that we just uh, uploaded there, okay? We wanna make sure that that's connected, connect that power on. And now we should be good to go. We'll go ahead and power that on. And as you can see, the ISO Linux is booting up and we are good to go. Okay. All right, we are up to speed here and we're gonna go ahead and click okay on here. Uh, unable to find the checksum. That happens when you uh, Oh, we got a serious error. And this is what happens when you haven't installed it before. So as I said, we're going through this together. So uh, it came to a critical error. Let's see what's going on. So first we got, a. it says to boot with a recovery, recovery ISO. I'm not sure we need to do that quite yet, um, but it's going to halt. And what we're gonna do here is see if we can restart it. If we can restart it, then we won't have to recreate from the OVA. But I'm gonna see if it will restart and just boot up from the image, or if it's gonna come up and still give me that critical error. It may do that. I have seen that before. Okay, so it, it, it didn't come up with a critical error. So what we're gonna do, a lot of times without finding the checksum, it can be a problem with the media, with, with checking the media. When you um, go in and make it a bootable like I did, okay? So we're gonna try and just skip that and see if we can keep going and it looks like it's moving forward. So I think we're going to be okay here. So here it's checking the hardware to make sure that everything can be installed. It's checking to make sure that it's uh, according to the hardware specifications uh, in, in our virtualization matrix. So call manager, and as you know, as of 12.0, the call manager and Unity the versions are separate. They're not the same as they were before. So that's, it's telling us this is the version on the, the DVD and that's the one we want to install, so yes.
okay? Platform install wizard. So far, I haven't seen anything different than previous installations that I've done. So we're gonna go ahead and proceed here. Apply an upgrade patch. No, we do not need to apply an upgrade patch. Basic install, continue. Okay, here's our time zone. Nick speed, we don't want to change that. MTU size, we're not going to change that. All right, DHCP, it's asking if we want to use DHCP to assign an IP address. No, we're going to assign an, a static IP. And we're asking for our host name. And our IP address. Subnet mask and our gateway address. Pretty simple. All right, again, we need to talk about the DNS. It, this is a lab environment that I'm doing this in. Of course, uh, in a production environment, if you're installing it for the first time, you're gonna wanna make sure that your DNS is all set up correctly and, and working, okay? In this case, we're not gonna use DNS, okay? So I'm going to be saying no to this, but normally you would say yes, and you would need to have your host name and IP address set up in your DNS uh, as a computer. And also you need to make sure, uh, so as a, a record, and also you need to make sure that you have a reverse DNS lookup zone that is created. Normally, if you have that created, the when you create your A record, it will automatically create it or it will ask you if you want to automatically create the reverse lookup record. Um, and so, but if you don't have the reverse lookup zone, it's not gonna do that. So you need to make sure that that reverse lookup zone is created, is ready for that. Uh, and if it wasn't, when you created your A record, you need to go back, create that, create the reverse lookup record for your call manager uh, for your Unity, for all of the other ones, for if you have a pub and sub, if you have a, 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 um, a IMMP, uh, CCX, all of them have to have that uh, in there. So again, we're gonna do no. Okay, here's our platform administrator username, okay. Sure, I put this in right. Okay. Now that's for our OS admin, that's for our CLI, that's for our disaster recovery, uh, everything that we do there. Okay. Uh, our certificate information for our self signed certificates. Is this the first known in the cluster? Yes. Again, we I have not seen anything uh, new uh, to to give you. Everything has been the exact same as an 11.5 install or a 12.5 install. Now we need to put an NTP in. The install will not allow us to move forward without an NTP server. I currently do not have an internal NTP server, so I'm gonna use an external. Uh, and you need to make sure that your call manager can reach the external, obviously, uh, to be able to do that. So, but best case, in it, best scenario is to use an internal NTP that you have, uh, preferably uh, uh, your router, 
um, maybe a core switch, something like that that is an authoritative uh, NTP server. Okay, here's our security password. This does not have to be the same as the administrator platform password, but it does have to be the same between nodes, right? It has to be the same for your publisher and your subscriber because it is used for data encryption and it's used for communication in between the nodes. All right, our SNTP. Now, if you want to be able to send messages, uh, send reports from Call Manager, you're going to need that. I personally am not doing that in this lab environment, so I'm going to say no, but that's what's needed. Okay, so here's our uh, smart call home enable page. Um, these are, uh, this is a, a system that was put in place by Cisco for there to be easier um, uh, communication with TAC, where you can enable the smart call home and it will send information to Cis directly to Cisco TAC. Obviously, your SMTP server has to be done in the previous page, um, but that's what that is for. And we're going to go ahead and disable them all. We don't need them in this environment. Okay, here's our application username. That's for the GUI. That's where you're gonna do all of your configuration. Okay, again, this can be the same as the uh, platform uh, OS administrator. It can be different, depends on what you want to do. Okay, I personally am making it the same for this lab environment. All right, our platform configuration is complete. After this, it's going to start uh, copying files to the server for the installation, okay? After that, what it does is it then reboots the server, tries to enable the network, and then once it knows that the network is good and it is working, then it will continue the install. If it finds that there's a problem in the network, that's where the DNS comes in, it may find a problem that you don't have a reverse DNS or something like that. That's when it will stop and it will say, do you want to redo this? Do you want to go back and check your network configuration? In this particular case, we're going to hit OK. I don't think it's going to stop and we're going to go ahead and let it go forward and everything's. it should go ahead and finish the install without any problems. Of course, knock on wood, uh, I need to make sure that that <laughs> is going to happen. So again, this is the first time I've done this install, so I'm going through it along with you guys to help you understand that if we run into any problems, we'll fix them and go from there.
and the install is done. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can log in here. Let that log in to the CLI. And as you can see, CISO Unified Communications Manager 14.0.1. Welcome to the platform command line interface. While that's logging in, I'm going to see if we can get into the GUI. 230 was the IP address that we used. And there we are. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And there it is. Okay. Same alert information that we get from 12.5 with the 911, the smart software manager, backup device, and emergency notification paging. Those all uh, were coming up before as well. So I think this is done. And in a future video, I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, as I said before, an upgrade from 12.5 to 14 to take you through that. I'm also going to go through and take a look at some of the newer features in uh, 14, in Call Manager 14. So I hope you like this video and this installation. If you have any questions, comment down below. Uh, and uh, if you, if you just like the video, just go ahead and hit the like, comment below, subscribe to my channel so you can see more and hit the notification so that you can be notified when I have a new video. All right. Thank you guys. And we'll talk to you later.